Hello from Mexico City, where we are having the 10th IAS conference on HIV science. And today we are in conversation with Bruce Richmond, who is founder of the Prevention Access Campaign. Bruce, can you tell us something more about this Prevention Access Campaign and what led you to start this you to you, you equal to you movement? You equals you. Um, well, I, I've been living with HIV since 2003, and I learned from my doctor in 2012 that because I had an undetectable viral load, I couldn't transmit HIV. And an undetectable viral load means that I'm on, I'm on treatment and that the uh, treatment has suppressed the level of virus in my blood so low that it's not detected by tests. That's called undetectable. And that keeps me alive and healthy and also means I cannot transmit to anybody else. And most people who are on treatment can achieve an undetectable viral load by taking your medication every day. Uh, so when I learned this, it, it changed my life. You know, it opened up possibilities for for love, for 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 having intimacy, for having babies that I never thought would be possible because I was no longer infectious. But the world didn't know. People weren't being told about this. So we created a campaign called U Equals U, Undetectable is Untransmittable. And we worked with the US federal health departments and scientists and researchers around the world to make sure this message gets out to the public. So today, U equals U, this was three years ago when we, we launched. Today, U equals U is in 98 countries. We work with 888 organizations that are working to get this message out urgently to people living with HIV, to fight stigma, to improve their lives. And they're also using this message to uh, advocate so that everybody has access to treatment and the services so that we can we can all benefit from this that we can all become undetectable for our health and to prevent new transmissions uh, so uh, what uh, these uh, 98 countries where this movement has spread to does it include the high burden countries and does it include india because i'm from india so i just wanted to know that it does there are programs in india that signed on very very early on um, uh, one of our activists, Jyoti, lives in, uh, in India and is a very strong activist. It also includes 14 of the 16 EECA countries, uh, also Brazil, um, Uganda, Zambia, Botswana. In fact, in Zambia, the president of Zambia just launched a national U equals U campaign in all 10 provinces. So we have a, a love this picture, a picture of the president of Zambia with a U equals U activist with a U equals U t-shirt. So it is in, in uh, almost all of the highest burden countries, you know, including Russia. Uh, what have been your successes so far in three years from uh, st your three year long journey? Uh, can you share some uh, best examples or uh, what? I, I think one of the, the biggest successes of the campaign was in uh, back in 2016 when we when we launched we started conversations with the United States federal health departments so with CDC National Institutes of Health Health and Human Services and we said to them you know there's enough science now it's time to update the risk from people with HIV because that affects everything that definition of risk affects our lives dramatically and affects stigma and it affects the field every stage of the care continuum so within one year the cdc released new language moving from reduced risk to effectively no risk and that changed the world for people with hiv it changed the field forever so that was one of the i think the the most important accomplishments of the of the campaign Despite having this evidence-based science, we are still far from reaching the UNAIDS 90-90-90 targets and uh, I think we are still far away from reaching the Agenda 2030 target. Of course, that is we still have more time for that, but we are also lagging behind in the 90-90 targets. So what according to you are the main barriers? Why is means we have the science, we have the tools and still we are not able to achieve zero new transmissions? Well, that's one of my favorite questions. I would say um, it's about the will and it's about leadership. Uh, what we've seen from this campaign uh, it was, is, 
is le real leadership. We've seen people in to be the first in their countries to stand up and say, I can't transmit HIV. And going against the status quo, fighting the status quo, um, risking their personal and professional reputations. And so what I've been, what I've seen is that the status quo and countries around the world is not good for the epidemic. We need new leadership. We need people who are going to welcome innovation and change and promote new leadership, especially from key affected populations, uh, because this the, the old leadership isn't working. And I've even seen that, you know, in the, in the United States, um, among our own people living with HIV. Uh, there are organizations that still have done nothing to communicate this message to people living with HIV. And if you're not sharing the message about the benefits of treatment to save your lives and prevent new transmissions, then, you know, you're part of the problem. So I think we need to identify new leaders. I think we need to promote new leadership. And I think we need to look at who in the field is effective and pioneering. I think we really need to look at a lot of these organizations and a lot of these uh, gatherings and statements and, and you know, people love meetings around the world. I, you know, I have friends who fly from country to country and go to meetings where nothing's accomplished, but they just go to meetings and talk. And I think we need to stop enabling that. I think funders need to pay attention to what they're funding. I think funders need to look at what organizations actually have an impact. Um, and where things are, are working. Um, so new leadership, looking at who has impact and effectiveness and promote those folks and organizations that are really, really having an impact at meeting, uh, getting to 90, 90, 90 and doing innovative, innovative work that will get us to that goal. What about the political will? Because eventually it comes to the governments to, uh, means the treatment is there, people want it but they're not able to access it. Right. Um, yeah, so again, I think that comes to leadership and when it's a gov government issue or federal, you know, these health ministries that are not uh, being responsive to the community's needs, uh, I think that's harder than when, when it's a community organization because community organizations, you can have leverage over them to move them. It's harder when it's, uh, when it's a, a government, but I think that if governments are aware, if these federal health ministries are aware that getting treatment to your community isn't just going to save our lives and it's not just for the well-being of people with HIV but it's going to end the epidemic and and if people use that argument and and present that argument to their federal health ministries um, that could make a big difference our old argument isn't enough as we know our old argument we need treatment and services to save our lives and health care is a human right it's not enough we need to say that and we need to say we need health care and treatment and services to end the epidemic because if you can get us to undetectable we'll stay healthy and we won't be transmitting hiv anymore so that's an important strategy that we're we're seeing in some places and not not in others uh, this may be a very cliched uh, statement, but uh, we still want your message from this conference regarding you equal you. Well, I will, I will look at the camera and say directly to the folks who are watching this, the message from this conference about you equals you is please think about this. Right now, there are millions and millions of people with HIV, just 500,000 in the United States, who are on treatment and are undetectable, their lives are at risk. They are suffering from social rejection, from isolation, from suicide, from intimate partner violence, from prosecution, from murder, because they and other people think they're infectious. And we have this information that can immediately alleviate that suffering. We must tell people U equals U. It's scientifically sound. It's a fact. UNAIDS is behind it. WHO is behind it. We must share that information. And that not only will affect our lives as people living with HIV, dramatically affect our lives and the stigma that we have been living with and dying from for decades, but it will also have a dramatic impact on the field because we'll see more people going on treatment and staying on treatment and staying in care for their lives and to protect others. And if we use it in a pub as a public health argument for access to treatment, for viral load testing, we know 
that that will reduce new infections and bring people closer to ending the epidemic. So U equals U is a revolution that includes everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.